Alright, what is up guys? And of course always, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better. And this week we're covering the, well, monsters, sad streamers, really. Hippowdon and Sanaconda, these two Pokemon fields are rather new niche. And that is the defensive ground types that supports a whole team with Wither. While Tyranitar has kind of filled that void, it's been rather rare. Hippon was kind of new to that, and then we had Eagleleaf before it, and now Sanaconda. And it actually looks like both Hippon and Sanaconda are actually on the same turf. And they are extremely defensive with good offensive merits. And it's up to me to always go over their offensive, defensive, smoke and OU viability, Crafty availability and niches to find out which one of these two great ground types that really are better. And as always, we're gonna cover the Pokemon introduced first, and this time, that is of course Hippowdon. Now, for me, Hippowdon has always been one of those great, heavily defined ground types. And the ground type is usually good defensive typing with immunity in electric, resistance to poison and rock, and weakness to grass, ice, and water. The weaknesses, while a lot of them, in theory, are easily patchable for many reasons and are very, very easily combined with our mods, and just ground type overall, good def secondary typing too, though soul ground, always good. Uh, when it comes to its abilities, we have both sand falls and sand stream. Sandstream is usually where it's at, as it's something that really supports the team quite naturally. But Sand Force can be used to actually be offensive yourself. Let's say you combine yourself with Tyranitar or something like Gigalith, and you can actually capitalize on while well, doing monstrous damage, really. Sand Force basically means that once you are in a Sandstorm, you get a Life or Boost to your ground moves, your stone or rock moves, and steel moves. So having combinations such as Earthquake, Heavy Slam, or Stone Edge is heavily benefiting, though Sandstream is always the preferable one. When it comes to stat distribution, it is really defined what this Pokemon is doing. It is clearly a bulky Pokemon. 108 in HP is quite a lot. 112 in his attack? Yeah, this guy stings when it actually attacks. 118 in defense is really good. 68 in special attack is not that impressive, 72 in special defense is quite good with that high HP, and 47 in speed, while bad, it is not the worst slow ground type, it actually is on the speedier side for a tankier Pokemon, and overall, you know, this is a good stat distribution, this is a Pokemon that soak hits and retaliate, and it is an expert at that since its introduction in his generation 5, and has been phenomenal since then. Now, Hippowdon's move pool is something that I just really can just define as perfection in many ways. It is a really shallow move pool, but the things it gets define this Pokemon so well. First and foremost, this Pokemon gets slack off. Basically, this means that you have a proper recovery to support your really good defensive spread. It basically means that Hippowdon is doing exactly what it's meant to do, which is so kit and retaliate. And what really helps this Pokemon push the borders is it has two ways of statusing. We have Toxic, which is you know your usual splashable move, but you also have Jorn. Jorn forces switches as you know you get one turn of attacking, but then you get yourself asleep, and you don't want to be in that position, which means Hippowdon has a chance to actually kind of dictate the matchup quite well. Uh, one thing that really, really gets me going here is also that it gets Roar and Whirlwind, which means this Pokemon yet again forces switches. While it is a stagnated Pokemon, it is able to pressure some matchups. It should go without saying when it comes to moves itself. It gets Earthquake, which is probably the most relevant one. We have Stomping Tantrum, Bulldoze, High Horsepower, uh, but of course you have the Fang moves. You have Fire Fang, Ice Fang, Crunch, and Fire Fang. Which is phenomenal, good spread move overall, and you have Rock Slide, Stone Edge, and you even have fighting moves in Revenge and Super Power. So overall, you know, this guy doing a few things right. Uh, it also gets, when it comes to potential setup, we have Curse and Stockpile. Curse could be very, very, very interesting. I've used that before myself in a Trick Room team, and the idea was setting up Sand with Tyranitar, and then you had Curse to get away a Body Press, which I forgot to mention, because I have to have a decent defense to get it with Earthquake and Fire Fang. And you know what? 
it did all right. It's it's not made for physical combat, but it can pull a few punches. It is clearly physical enough to pressure some matchup. It even gets some muddy water this generation, and the reason I mentioned that is because it actually can take on an elite play, something like Ride On naturally, and that's that's quite dangerous. Uh, so overall. When we're looking at Pony Power Down, we're looking at Pokemon that are really, really stagnated, super passive, but it has offensive merits. And even though it is super passive, it is able to force switches, which means its passiveness is not something that goes against it. If anything, it punishes matchups that can't force it out because usually you want to have a setup opportunity. But due to Hippodon's way of either joining you or actually whirling you out, you are in a pressure moment where you have to deal with this Pokemon head on without setting up. And that is a very few Pokemon that actually cover that naturally, which is why Hippodon is one of the most interesting and phenomenal Pokemon ever created so far in Pokemon. However, we have a Generation 8 Pokemon that is ready to battle this guy in Sanaconda. Let's see what Sanaconda can do to Hippodon's viability. Yet again, we do have a Soul Ground type on our hand, and uh, Santa kind of do things a bit differently than he piled on. First, I'll start with the abilities of uh, Santa Conda. So we got Sand Veil, which you will never use. Then we got Shed Skin, which is probably an ability that this Pokemon perfected. Scrafty was before doing it really well. Santa Conda is definitely proven to be the superior with this ability. Shed Skin basically means that once you are status with any ability or any status that is, this ability has a 30% chance of kicking in and recover your status. So if you go for rest, you never know, you might actually not wait a turn and actually wake up because of that ability. Because Santa Conda is somewhat bulky, it does use this ability quite well. And then we got Sand Spit, which is basically your accessory for this Pokemon. Um, Sand Spit works a little bit differently than Sand Stream because basically you need to get hit to activate that ability. The rest of the silver lining, though, while it doesn't sound that great at first, one has to consider that there are matchups where this could be extremely well. Take, for example, um, that you just want it to be activated as you fall, it might actually be very workable in that environment. And your Sandspit overall is a very good ability because it is kind of passive. It is more passive than Sandstream, but you, if you predict right, you can actually get the sand when you need it rather than forcing yourself to take st or streamed hits because of your unfortunate activation with Powdown or Grand or for that matter. So it works differently. I say less re reliable in Sandstream, but it also has its merits of you know, not activating all the time. When it comes to its sand division, it is not as physically capable as a Powdown. We've got 17 HP, which is quite a lot lower than a Powdown. Roughly the same defense, a bit higher at 125 and 70 instead of 72 in special defense, but due to lower HP, it is definitely not as capable of taking specially defensive hits. 107 attack is quite high, 65 in special attack is fair, and then we got 71 in speed, which for a tanky Pokemon is really fast. It is surprisingly fast. Santa Conda stands out as a, one of the bulkier Pokemon with a really, really good speed here to actually hurt even the tankiest Pokemon first, and combine that with a 107 attack, it's it's quite good. It's very formidable. Yes, it is an exchange of its bulk, but it also becomes a bit of a speedier monster because the matchup does allow it. So if a powder had a really really defining move pool, let me tell you this: Santa Conda really does have that too. First and foremost, it doesn't have John, surely, but it has Glare, and Glare is a huge benefit for any Pokemon to have and being speedier with Glare is phenomenal. It is incredible how many things that will do. Guaranteed paralyzation is something that really really shouldn't be underestimated. Then it comes to you know, the regular stabs. You have Earthquake, you have the high horsepower and then you have filler moves in Fire Fang. We have Rock Blast, Stone Edge, uh, Poison Tail, Outrage, Sin Headbutt and even Hurricane. The reason I want to mention Hurricane is because it has a setup move that may not have so many utilities right now, but it is a good setup move nonetheless, and that is Call. And Call makes you boost much like Curse in Attack and Defense, but instead of losing speed, you boost your accuracy. 
Persona Kana, as of this recording, don't have that many moves they can miss, but it has Hurricane and also has Stone Edge, which makes Coil a really, really good defensive merit. It also has Body Press. And Body Press, together with Earthquake, Coil, and Rest, is a phenomenal combination, really. It also has Iron Defense if you want to boost your Body Press only, but trust me, you want to go with Coil. And if you're going to go for a Sweeper set, it will do quite right. The main reason for that is because of that shed skin. Being able to actually recover as you're boosting is something that is quite rare and something this guy does very well. Uh, it should really go without saying that this Pokemon also gets Stealth Rocks and in NU right now, in a lower tier that is, it fills the same role like you powered on, a more defensive aspect, but setting up rocks reliably, having high power earthquakes and overall pressure matchups naturally. Santa Kana is one of the best new Pokemon introduced and um, what else can I say? It is a rare to see some a Pokemon being redefined with a new typing and being able to do as well as Sonicon has been doing for well this half year. It's been incredible to see it thrive. So now it comes back to a real question. Who are these guys here are of course really better? So as we go over these Pokemon, we're really gonna start about, of course, in their defining viability. Offensive merits, for me, Santa Kana pushes Hippon a little bit better. It has a lot to do with a higher speed that does allow you to hit it slightly harder. So here it's definitely a point to Santa Kana. However, in defensive merits, it's kind of easy to see that due to Hippon having proper recovery and a better defensive spread, it just simply has to be the Pokemon that wins out on this round. When it comes to Smogon viability, it is kind of tough to you know they are separated by quite a lot in tiers and for obvious reasons. He powered on due to its defensive merits are more than just a sand streamer. It is a defensive check to a lot of higher tier Pokemon. Due to Sanaconda's somewhat unreliable way of recover, it isn't as capable of soaking hits. Which has been defining for it. Hippowdon is a very, very good overall Pokemon and pushes the viability of what a defensive Pokemon can do and has a matchup there that is Sol, which in a Santa Conda, due to its lower defenses, really can't. So, Hippowdon absolutely get this round. In a draft league environment, however, I argue that they are on par with one another, but I would absolutely say that due to the flexibility of Santa Conda covering roles in Glare and Cole, that it does push a little bit to what a draft league environment can do. He powers a good blank slate for a lot of matchup, does solve that naturally. However, due to Santa Conda's more flexible move pool and actually disrupting Pokemon lock better than Hippowdon can do, I argue that Santa Conda fills a stronger role besides the defensive merit. So as stated, defensively Hippowdon is always going to be better, but the flexibility of Santa Conda should not be underestimated. And now it comes down to the decisive part, which are the niches. And this part is actually quite easy. Santa Conda has not been around long enough to actually get enough niches. As of right now, I covered the Coil and Hurricane variant. That's basically it. Besides its Stealth Rock variant, which you pound on share and does better, it really has nothing to make it stand out. Look upon Hippano, however, who does push those viability a bit longer and stretcher because it has both a force switching and has a broad move pool to kind of push some other matchups, but it also has a separate viability that boosts itself under sand, which makes it even stronger and consider it always strong as it is, it is very easy for me to just say that due to Hippowdon's slightly broader and niched move pool, that it wins the niche round and therefore also wins overall viability. So while I think Santa Cana is phenomenal, Hippowdon is absolutely the winner between these two. Really hope you guys enjoyed this episode and yeah, it's one of kind of those weird ones because Santa Conda is not bad. It is really really interesting and it might actually just be a few moves away from actually, you know, thriving. But as of right now, Hippowdon is super defining, has always really been that, and it's kinda hard to push this guy away and this clearly isn't helping. 
That said though, I'm really gonna get a chance to talk about Sanaconda and hopefully you guys learn a few things about it because it is not your average ground type, it is standing out. One thing I really was missing with Sanaconda that sadly wasn't happening, really two things. One was, I really wanted Sanaconda to be a flying ground type and turn to that tornado it turned in the Gigantamax form. I think it was a missed opportunity, ground flying would have been phenomenal, plus hurricane, come on. And coil, yeah, you know, it would make sense. The other one was Thousand Arrows. I really wanted Santa Conda to kind of fill the void that Saiga was doing, but in a lesser extent. And missing out on that, I think was a missed opportunity. That's it though. I hope you guys, as always, enjoyed this episode. And make sure to, of course, like. And if you aren't subscribed, make sure to do just so. And tell me, what do you think about Santa Conda and Hippodon? And which one do you think is better? And as always, thank you for watching. And join us next week for this matchup.